Now, let's kick off your financial future. Here's Josh Jelinski. Hi, everybody. This is Josh Jelinski coming to you live. Give us a call, 800-321-0710. If you have a question on stocks, bonds, annuities, mutual funds, we have special guest David Peters, founder and owner of the David Peters Financial Group, uh, discussing with us uh, whatever you want to talk about, folks. So give us a call, 800-321-0710. He joins us to discuss the struggling economy and challenges facing small business owners due to artificial stimulus being pumped in the economy. So good morning, David. Uh, Talk a bit about the free market and how the government involvement and artificial stimulus give only short-term bonds, short-term boosts, and don't allow the market to self-correct naturally. You want to talk about that, David? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, good morning, Josh. Uh, Thanks so much for having me on the show. Uh, So, I mean, I think that right now um, you're starting to see some some of the theories uh, from uh, Milton Friedman kind of come to life uh, a little bit. And and, and really... um, what Friedman, uh, you know, kind of talked about was uh, this idea that uh, if uh, government kind of interferes too much uh, and uh, you sort of pump too much uh, money into the economy, that ultimately you prevent uh, the economy from doing what it does uh, naturally, which is, uh, you know, kind of naturally uh, adjust for sort of slow, steady inflation. And uh, you, you, and I think that uh, that's kind of what you're seeing right now. You're seeing the impact of a lot of money coming into the economy in the form of, uh, you know, stimulus payments, in the form of uh, forgiven PPP loans, in the form of uh, tax incentives, and especially the advanced, uh, uh, you know, child tax credit and things like that. And I think you could probably argue that at least initially that, uh, you know, we we needed something. People were hurting. But uh, this has uh, gone on for an extended period of time. And so I think uh, what you're seeing is, is you're seeing the impact of that. You're seeing uh, some signs that that uh, that uh, some of the economic growth that, that we've seen more recently is uh, is maybe not necessarily all real. Um, and I think a lot of uh, financial advisors, a lot of financial professionals have kind of suspected that, but, uh, you know, they, they weren't really sure. And so, uh, but we're seeing, seeing some signs of that right now. Uh, GDP growth uh, not being what's expected, labor shortages, supply chain disruptions, things like that. Sustainability in what's happening right now. Yeah, I, I think that that's the, that that's the big concern right now is is sustainability, and uh, you know, and, and um, we're starting to to realize that uh, you know that there was that uh, that this is is probably not sustainable, and and so, um, and I think that uh, you know you're you're seeing it in a lot of ways, and I, I think uh, you know especially. Uh, employers that are trying to hire right now, I think that they're seeing, uh, you know, the the problems uh, of all of this kind of very directly. Uh, they can't uh, they can't get the help that they need to really expand their business. Do you have any advice right now for small business owners looking to fill open roles right now? Well, I think that you have to make a decision uh, from the standpoint that. Uh, you have to decide, uh, you know, are you going to pay, uh, you know, the additional money that it might take to get somebody on board? Um, I was talking to a recruiter uh, it, on uh, my podcast uh, this past uh, uh, this past week uh, who works in the D.C. Uh, area. And uh, one of the things that he was saying was, is he's seeing a lot of folks, uh, a lot of uh, employers offer signing bonuses, offer, uh, you know, uh, enhanced incentives, uh, benefits and things like that. If you're out on the job market looking for a new opportunity, I mean, it's great. But from an employer's perspective, you, you I, I think you need to decide, I mean, is, is that what you're going to do? Is, is that what you need to do right now? 
or is the better move to just to just wait um, and to delay hiring? If you're in the small business sector um, and, uh, you know, money is tight and, uh, you know, you have kind of your hiring budget and that's it, you may have no choice but to wait. Yeah, or, or you could train young, you know, recruit right. maybe inexperienced people and train them. Um, yeah, you know, and, of- and maybe, you know, maybe recruiting a little bit uh, heavier uh, folks that are straight out of school and uh, things like that. That can be a way to, uh, to handle it as well. Now, what do you think about inflation right now? Are we having inflation or is it merely temporary due to the the aftershocks of COVID? I think that uh, it's probably a combination of a lot of things. I think that uh, you probably are seeing a little bit of uh, over exuberance uh, in in the market. Uh, I think that uh, you're also seeing some uh, you know, some some fear because of, uh, you know, kind of the, the new uh, Delta variant uh, for COVID. I think that uh, you're seeing it, seeing a, a combination of a lot of things right now that are contributing to inflation, um, including, uh, you know, the government, again, uh, you know, putting uh, putting a lot of money uh, into the economy. I think that uh, that uh, that's what you're seeing there when they, you know, generally when the government uh uh, puts in a lot of money into the economy. I mean, you see, you see higher inflation, and I think, I, I think that's what you're seeing now. Do you think we'll have deflation after the inflation? I mean, some people like I Lacey through- Hunt, who we've had on, has made a case that this isn't inflation, that it's actually uh, disinflationary because with all this spending, we really haven't. We've grown the economy by six percent. If you take inflation out of it, right. it's only a one percent growth. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's I, I think that's possible. Again, that kind of gets into I think uh, you know how much of this do we actually believe is uh, you know the economy improving versus uh, you know just kind of kind of artificial. Uh, you know whether that's uh, you know kind of the uh, uh, the government uh, kind of propping us up, and uh, I think that that's really only something that you can uh, you know truly understand sort of after the fact, and uh, you know kind of once. Uh, you know, the, the government starts to take uh, some of these incentives uh, run out, um, I think, and, and the economy is kind of left to uh, kind of stand on its own. And what do you think about the inability to fill in many demands in raw material right now? I think it's uh, I think it's troubling. I think, uh, you know, you, uh, again, I think, uh, you know, that's uh, another uh, problem with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, labor shortages and, and, you know, things like that. I mean, all of those things are uh, all work together. And, and so uh, that's, uh, that's problematic. And it's making it so that, uh, you know, the prices are price, prices are going to go up. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, and that it's uh, going to make make it tougher for uh, companies to control costs. And uh, they, you know, a lot of times that uh, the only choice then is to pass that on to con- on to uh, the consumer. How is the supply demand connected to labor shortages, and what is the stimulus money doing to help or hurt these shortages? Well, I think that uh, I, I I tend to look at my own clients as as kind of just. Uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, as at least anecdotally um, information on how, kind of how people are feeling about the stimulus uh, stimulus packages and things like that. And I think that uh, because we have had multiple rounds of stimulus payments, because we've had uh, the uh, long periods where we've had, uh, you know, forgiven PPP loans and things like that, the things that I mentioned earlier, I, I think that uh, people are starting to get, uh, to get used to them. And I think that uh, um, I, I think that that in of itself is uh, making it so that, uh, uh, you know, maybe there's there's less uh, incentive right now, um, you know, to do the things that our economy would do naturally. People, uh, you know, going out and trying to, uh, you know, trying to uh, go out and find uh, find jobs. Uh, they can, uh, you know, they they you know, where we talked about how uh, the employers are kind of doing uh, whatever they can to get to, to get people on board, but people are just aren't uh, aren't uh, you know uh, aren't uh, quick to land and and quick to sign on, and and so I think that uh, uh, you're seeing this this problem continuing to compound. And I, again, I think a part of it is is it's it's habitual. It's uh, people are kind of used to 
um, the stimulus, uh, the the stimulus payments, the the uh, payments that uh, you know, the kind of the uh, easy to to get money. Um, uh, you know, but point to another uh, uh, Milton Friedman uh, quote: uh, "There's no such thing as a free lunch," and and uh, that's uh, that's one of his uh, probably his, his most famous one. And I think that uh, you know, again, you're you're starting to see that uh, uh, right now. Do you think we'll see a correction as the unemployment benefits come to an end? Yeah, I do. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I do think that uh, we are going to see a correction. And I think that, uh, you know, as uh, unemployment benefits end, as uh, government uh, uh, programs uh, tail off, I think, yeah, I think uh, we're, we're definitely going to see that. And I think a lot of other, I think a lot of financial advisors uh, either, uh, you know, sort of outwardly or kind of more inwardly have, have also said that. I mean, they have, have at least thought that, that, you know, that this is kind of almost uh, too good to be true. We've, you know, the market's been up, 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 up. And so uh, for the most part, and, and so, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, there is uh, this idea of regression to the mean. And so, uh, you know, if markets are kind of, Uh, going too hot for an extended period of time, the uh, professional skepticism uh, kicks in and we kind of all think to ourselves, okay, when does the correction happen? And what are you telling uh, clients? I know we're not giving any financial advice, but what what are you telling clients to protect themselves in these uncertain times? Well, I think that uh, a lot of my clients are uh, retirement uh, uh, planning clients, and so we're looking over the long term anyway. And so especially when you're planning for retirement, uh, you know, and it's, it's long uh, time periods, longer term investing, um, it's, uh, you know, the message is often is, is that, uh, uh, you know, to not be sort of too quick to react to sort of day to day uh, and short-term movements in the market. I mean, uh, you know, uh, with retirement planning especially, I mean, we we care about getting from where you are to where you want to be in retirement. Um, and the stuff in the middle uh, tends to be just just kind of noise. It's, uh, you know, it's the, uh, it's just kind of uh, movements in the market. Markets are going to go up, markets are going to go down. But ultimately, we're kind of still aiming towards the long-term goal of getting people to uh, to retire in the ways that they want to. And so, for a lot of my clients, uh, you know, right now, it's uh, you know we're we're uh, uh, trying to figure out uh, you know whether or not our long-term strategy still works, um, and trying not to sort of uh, sort of overreact to uh, uh, to the the short-term uh, market movements that we've seen. Great, thank you for joining us, David Peters. David Peters Financial. Dot com, davidpetersfinancial.com. Thank you for joining us. And folks, when we return, we'll be back with your questions all hour at 800-321-0710. And a listener email I'm going to answer when we return. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. The preceding program was sponsored by the Jelinski Advisory Group. Any awards, rankings, or recognition by unaffiliated third parties or publications, including Five Star Wealth Manager, Advisory of the Year finalist by Senior Market Advisor, and Top of the Million Dollar Roundtable, are in no way indicative of the advisor's future performance or any individual client's investment success. No award, ranking, or recognition should be construed as a current or past endorsement of Josh Jelinski or Wealth Quarterback LLC. Information regarding specific awards, rankings, or recognitions is available on the Wealth quarterback website at www.jelinski.org. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Investment strategies such as asset allocation, diversification, or rebalancing do not assure or guarantee better performance and cannot eliminate the risk of investment losses. There are no guarantees that a portfolio employing these or any other strategy will outperform a portfolio that does not engage in such strategies. This broadcast should not be construed by any client or prospective client as a solicitation to effect or attempt to affect transactions and securities or the rendering of personalized investment advice. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions, the information discussed in this broadcast may no longer be reflective of current positions or recommendations. While information presented is believed to be factual and up-to-date, Josh Jelinski and Wealth Quarterback do not guarantee its accuracy, and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. The tax and estate planning information discussed is general in nature, is provided for informational purposes only, and should not be construed as legal or or tax advice. Listeners should consult an attorney or tax professional regarding their specific legal or tax situation. Advisory services offered through Wealth Quarterback LLC.